Okay. All right. We should be recording. We should be started here. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of go ahead and talk through some strategies and best practices for the poster sessions here as part of the SRS. Um, if you don't know me already, I'm Nicholas and Kelly from New Mexico Tech here. I'm one of the directors of the Writing and Communication Lab, and I also teach courses such as the composition sequence here at Tech and technical writing, as well as some electives on things like computer hackers and big data and things like that. So here's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to talk about the poster session itself and how you'll be evaluated during that session. In terms of posters, I'm going to talk about what to do as well as what to avoid when you're putting together a poster session. I'm going to go through some public speaking best practices you can use while responding to questions in your poster session. I'm going to talk about some ways that you can make sure to avoid jargon in your material and utilize clear language that an audience outside of your specialty will understand. I'm also going to show you just a couple of the templates we have for the posters that are available on the SRS website. And then we may conclude with some uh, evaluation of previous posters and materials like that. Okay. So let's get started then. A good thing to keep in mind when we're talking about any sort of genre where we're going to be communicating with a non-specialist audience, I like to use, I like to reference this quote, which is, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. This is a good reminder, right? It tells us that when we really have digested the material we're researching, we can explain it in such a way that anyone can understand, right? That it's the kind of final step towards processing the information and the concepts we're working with. And it's a good thing to execute in a context like this where we are speaking to a diverse audience of different skill sets, different backgrounds. Talking a little bit more concretely about the poster sessions themselves, here's how they work. They are one hour sessions. Um, the posters must be submitted to SRS in the PowerPoint format. All of the posters will be uploaded onto the SRS website where the public can view them. Each poster session, each kind of discrete poster session will be a live group Zoom meeting uh, with a moderator and questions will be accepted from each poster for each poster presenter. And so each poster presenter will be able to get questions from the audience there. The student presenters will be able to interact live with attend attendees who are asking questions about their work. So you'll have their, your materials, your poster material up. People will be able to look at that and they'll be able to ask you questions about those materials, which you'll want to answer. In terms of evaluation, there's two different categories of people who will be evaluating your posters. One of them is evaluators, the official team, right, that have been assigned to kind of grade the poster sessions. Then there's reviewers who are informal and anonymous uh, evaluators who can provide feedback during the session itself, right? So these are volunteers. The evaluators consider things like audience awareness, that is to say how you highlight the relevance of your work, how you tune your language to your audience, and how effectively you answer questions. They also look at your scientific reasoning, which is the effectiveness of your methods, the logic behind your process, and are your recommendations consistent with the data you collect? They're also going to be looking at organization, and that's things like are your sections headings clear, and is it easy to follow through the material? Design and visuals is another component they look at, and this is how easy is it to read your materials, particularly from a distance or on a smaller screen, which I'll say more about in just a second here. There's also how effectively you summarize and distill your source material, and that can be balancing citing versus summarized content from your presentation. And then last is your, your delivery uh, and your presentation components themselves, right? So the sort of professional appearance you, you offer while you're meeting and answering questions. This is also your demeanor overall while you're presenting and your vocal delivery. All of that in mind, here's some good practices. Here's some things you want to do while you're giving a poster session. First up is follow your template. The template is provided on the NMT site, uh, the SRS site, the NMT SRS site. Your design should maximize readability. Again, in a, in a physical poster session, people are gonna be looking at this content from a distance. In an online poster session, we can't guarantee that they've got a giant computer monitor to look at. So you wanna make sure you're making use of the space you have and that you're ensuring your audience can read the materials you put on your physical or digital poster. You wanna prioritize your important information. Summarize and highlight the main takeaways that the audience needs regarding your poster. 
You also want to make sure that whatever you're talking about, either in your poster or in your responses to your questions, is understandable by a general audience outside your specialization field and not even necessarily a specialist in any STEM field. We want to think about tuning our language to a general audience so that we can maximize the impact and convey the importance of what it is we're talking about. You'll also, when you're giving a poster session, want to utilize good public speaking practices. So we talked about some things to do. Here's some things to avoid. First of all, do not overload your poster with data, with information, right? Otherwise it kind of all gets lost in the mix there. You want to highlight what's important, as I said, and really kind of give us the key takeaways. You also want to avoid recreating your written report verbatim. You don't want to go copying and pasting everything in your written report into your poster. That's not a poster, it's a paper organized in a funny way. You want to avoid using a busy or a messy design. This is particularly in things like backgrounds. Keep it simple so that you can maximize legibility. Lastly then, you also want to avoid, and this feeds into some of those other elements we've already talked about, don't rely on your poster to speak for you. The poster gives us an overview. The detail comes from your conversations with the audience members who ask you questions. So I mentioned two slides ago about follow public speaking best practices. I wanted to cover what those are in just a little bit more detail. First and foremost, dress appropriately and professionally for this context, right? It's an easy way to maximize your credibility and increase the audience's uh, inclination to listen to you and believe what you say. You want to be operating from an appropriate Zoom space, if at all possible, and if you're gonna be doing a remote presentation. If there's a lot of background noise and there's a lot of background stuff going on, it might distract your audience while you're trying to answer questions. So do what you can to find an appropriate Zoom environment for what you're doing. If you need to use a virtual backdrop, that's fine, right? But at the very least, try to find a quiet space that you can work from. Speak slowly. This is a good practice in general for public speaking. <clears throat> that way your audience can hear you and they can follow along with what you're saying. There's another advantage to speaking slightly more slowly than you usually do when you're talking. And that is that it allows you to choose your words more carefully. What this means also in practice is you can avoid filler phrases like us and ums and likes. They come up pretty naturally in our organic speaking, but when we are presenting to an audience, it's nice to remove some of those words. It adds another level of polish. And if you slow down just a little bit and choose your words, think very thoughtfully about how you want to pick the next thing you're gonna say, it's an easy way to eliminate some of those filler phrases. Also in Zoom or in real life, uh, in, in physical presentations, you wanna maximize eye contact with your audience. In a Zoom context, what that means is looking at your cameras, your, your, your camera on your computer. In a you know, in-person context, that means looking around at your audience. You don't need to stare at them for a long time, but you do wanna briefly regard them while you're looking around the room and make sure that everybody gets a little bit of eye contact or at least look in their direction, right? If you don't wanna do eye contact, that's fine as well. It helps engage your audience and makes them want to pay more attention to what it is you're saying. When you get questions, this is a good practice when you're operating in an academic context where you may get a variety of questions. Um, make sure first and foremost, if you can answer the question and you can always check with your audience, right? The person who asked you the question say, does that answer your question or can I elaborate further? If you can't answer the question, not a problem, right? Not everyone can know everything. There are graceful ways, however, to acknowledge that. You can say, I hadn't thought of that. Or, well, that's a great question. I think it requires a little bit of additional exploration or research. And then what I like to do, and there's a good practice in general, when you run into anything like that, or when you are answering a question, be gracious and appreciative that somebody's asking you about your work, that they're interested in what it is you're doing. So thank them. Thank you for that question. Right? Here's what I think. Or, Thank you for that question. I don't actually know. I think it would require a little bit of additional research, but I'm really excited to look into that or I may be able to look into that. That way you're being a gracious uh, presenter 
and responding as professionally as possible to the questions you get. Moving on from that now, let's talk a little bit about jargon or specialized language would be maybe a more neutral way to phrase that. When we say jargon, or I could even say specialized language, what I mean is discipline specific terminology that relies or requires shared knowledge to be meaningful. This is fine to some degree if you're talking to people in your field, your specialization, or maybe related fields. It is not gonna work as well or work at all if you're speaking to educated people outside your field. So what we wanna do is we wanna very thoughtfully consider what is the specialized language of my field? What terms do I take for granted as something everyone would know when in fact it's people in my specialization or my broad discipline that know those terms and not a, not a general audience? When that happens, when you think about that and are able to identify these words that might confuse or um, you know, uh, limit your audience's ability to understand what it is you're saying, you want to define those terms using plain language. Having talked about some public speaking best practices and what the format of the poster session is gonna look like, let's talk a little bit about the templates you can use to set up your posters. These are all available at nmt.edu slash SRS, postersessions.php. I'll post this link in the chat. Here's one example of a template. As you can see, it includes a number of sections you're likely to want to have, the abstract, your background, your experimental methods, the results, discussion of what you've learned, and then your vision for future work. You can also see they've allowed some space for figures. Don't overload with figures or don't put too much information on there that it becomes too busy, but those are places where you could add uh, selectively chosen elements. Here's another one you can look at. Again, sections are very similar, abstract methods, introduction, results, conclusion, future directions. The best way to kind of choose a template is to look at the content you want to work with, see which of these platforms or which of these kind of baselines most closely aligns with what it is you want to do. And from there, you can begin to work on your poster. Okay, so that covers the content of poster design, some best practices, and some elements that go into not only making an easy to read poster, but presenting and responding to questions in such a way that it's easy for your audience to follow what you're saying, and that you come as, as a polished professional talking about your specialized research in your field in a way that everybody can understand its significance. 